Hello and welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. My name is Renata von Scharner. I'm the founder and president of the Charles River Conservancy. And as with all these shows, it's always about the Charles River and the wonderful parklands. And today we're going to talk about Herder Park and in particular Herder Park Theatre. And with me, I have the expert with me, Michelle Sicolo. Welcome. Thank you. I'd hardly call myself an expert, but I'm happy to be here today. Oh, well, Thanks for inviting me. You know a lot and you sp have spent a lot of effort on it. And it's wonderful to have this rejuvenation happening in Herder Park and um, happening on the Charles River. As you know, the Charles River Conservancy is a non-profit and we have volunteer events, 2,000 volunteers a year, and many of them will be, have been working on Herder Park. We also built a skate park and we also um, bringing swimming back to the Charles and are building a swim park and making it easier for biking. So uh, we're going to talk about the Friends of Herder Park and you have their website and you will see that again. And let's go right to Herder Park. To orient ourselves, we see to the left um, Cambridge of the river. Uh, we see the 1010 Memorial Drive tower there. In the foreground, we have the Cambridge Cemetery. And then across the river, we have the wonderful Herder Park. So we shall tell us a little bit about the context of Herder Park, the neighborhood around it. It's not that well known for, for, for Cambridge residents, um, unfortunately, although it's a beautiful park. So tell us about what's near the Herder Park. Sure, thank you. Um, some people know it as uh, being within Artsani Park, which is the larger piece of land that has the, um, you'll see the kayaks when people drive down um, Star Drive and uh, Soldiers Field Road, and you'll see the uh, community gardens, yeah. and you'll see the, the water splash park for the children. There's an awful yeah. lot uh, going on in this stretch of land, but what people mostly don't know about is the Herder Amphitheater and the Herder Center, and those are located within the park, surrounded by a moat, which is one of the coolest things about this little parcel of land. Uh, but sadly, the amphitheater had fallen into disrepair and was not in use anymore for the community, and there were no performances going on or any activities. Yeah. Uh, now, I pushed you right to tell us about Herder Park and Wollstone Brighton, but I would love for you first to tell us a little bit about yourself. Why did you get involved? Um, why? Um, is Alston Brighton of importance to you because I know you live outside the city and you have done planning work mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. other places. Sure, thanks. I appreciate that question. So I'm a community development consultant and I spent um, more than 20 years working for a municipality doing community development work, building parks and playgrounds and trails. Um, and more recently, uh, moved my consulting firm, which I started about nine years ago. I moved it to the Alston neighborhood um, on North Beacon Street and um, hired and expanded. And so I have staff there now. And when I uh, developed a presence in the neighborhood through networking and contacts in, in my world, a number of people suggested that I should look at this project. I really didn't know anything about it until I put down some roots in the neighborhood. Um, and started to learn about some of the exciting things going on. And a colleague of mine, uh, Jessica Robertson, had suggested that I talk to Herb Nolan, who is a former colleague when I did, he did work with me in Hudson on um, yeah. some parkland and uh, visioning that we did along the river in Hudson. Yeah. So he was my Herb. employee in the 80s, actually. That's fabulous. I know, I know him from then, yes. So I knew Herb, and so yeah. we got together and started to talk about what was happening or not happening at this park and at this amphitheater, and uh, he had a, a larger vision, and I think it was shared by a number of other community volunteers who I was getting to know um, during that time phase about a year and a half, two years ago, when we all started meeting and talking, and we'd gather around my table in my office, the conference room table, and have pizza and talk about how we could make this a, a vibrant space again for the community. 
Yeah. Um, you know, it's a very divisive political time, and it's now more than ever critically important that we pay attention to the arts and our cultural resources. And that's what really inspired me to work on this project, because um, I think it's a way to bring people together, uh, give back to the neighborhood, help the community be a stronger, more vibrant place. Yeah, and it is really a neighborhood place. It is. Uh, because it is, it was originally conceived as a metropolitan um, theater That's right. place, but it doesn't have the public transportation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think that um, that also contributed to its downfall. That's right. But it is at the center of a community. That's right. Yeah. And the community is growing, and there's some very interesting things happening in Austin, yeah. right? I mean, it's certainly been in the news lately quite a bit about um, Harvard's expansion plans and New Balance's plans. Yeah, you might want to point out some of the developments that are happening near Herder Park that I think are of interest are relevant also for her to park. Well, and of course, the new commuter rail station just opened, Boston Landing, which is extremely exciting, and that's, I would say, less than a mile away from this park. Um, so it's, it's pretty neat with the New Balance project, where they are also now currently building some housing, and um, there are a number of other housing projects in the pipeline. It's almost too numerous to talk about um, in the Austin Brighton neighborhood, but it's also a, a neighborhood with with deep roots and wonderful homes and small um, houses that have remained. And yeah. so it still has much of its original feel in, yeah. in the community. And, and there on this, the map that is up on the screen is a big open area which is kind of below the green line. And, and that is now Charles View, the Charles View development. Yeah. Um, and that has been finished and is well loved. Exactly. And, and in, integrates very well into the community. Um, so it's a, it's a really vibrant community. Whenever I go to community meetings, I realize how, how active the community is. Yes, indeed. Yes. Indeed. So, um, so that is, of course, the wonderful part of Herder Park. You're right on the water, but you have this green expanse of green space that people use for volleyball and picnicking and of course the canoe and kayak. That's right. So let's look at more at the context of the of the um, the theater mm -hmm. which is as you mentioned in on a mo in a moat mm -hmm. which is this round circle around right. the the center there. Do you want to talk a little bit of what's landmarks there? Sure. Um, so there are, uh, there's only one way to get onto the parcel over a bridge that is adjacent to the community garden. So if you were to pull into the parking area off of Soldiers Field Road at Artsani Park, um, you would have to take a bridge to get over into the, the space. And mm -hmm. then what's really amazing about the amphitheater is that it's, it sits inside the land where the hill is built up around it. Um, so you have beautiful sort of acoustics and a beautiful natural setting. Uh, we're working on clearing out some of the brush and making it um, easier to potentially sit on the hillside. Mm -hmm. but, but what I was amazed at is what's still intact there. Yeah. All of the seating is there and the stage is there. When we first started looking at it, it was, the stage was unsafe and, and we'd fallen in significant disrepair and the seats needed to be repaired. A lot of the wooden boards for the benches had rotted out. But it was in much better shape than you would think of, and you know, with a little paint and yeah. and uh, some vision, um, already it's looking much much better than yeah. it was. Yeah, I found this image here. I got this from Diego, who put on the show, and so that was probably close to when um, to when it started to it, before it closed seven That's right. years ago. That's right. And um, then I think there was one season without lights because the lights could not be repaired. Mm -hmm. And I remember an event um, in Herder Park where we um, honored our volunteers. So we invited the volunteers and their families to come before the show and they could stay for the show. Mm -hmm. And what is wonderful about the space is um, with this scenery, it, it's, you can't really see the river, but some stage designers made the vista to the river which is on the left hand side made it open so you could actually see the river i remember the arcadia show by stoppard was a wonderful way and you mentioned the hillsides around it right. 
that can be used for the performance as well. Yeah, so this is kind of um, where you found it, yes. where you found yes. it. The lights down, many of the benches broken, um, the stage was broken, that's kind of how you found That's it. That's how we found it, exactly. We weren't um, comfortable stepping foot on the stage because it was too rotted. You know, it, was, it really felt unsound. Um, yeah. And of course, with the electrical poles having fallen down, you, you know, there was a question about if any of that electricity was still alive and, and how dangerous that could be. But um, it looks vastly different today, thanks yeah. to the help, so, the help of the uh, Charles River Conservancy volunteers. Um, and uh, Sasha Valerius, who is your uh, volunteer coordinator, uh, I think that she has helped us run, and she has mostly run them and been in charge of them herself, about eight events, yeah. cleanup days. She yes. loves working there. And, uh, and we yeah. love having her. Yeah. And she, it is amazing to me how many people she's able to bring to the site and the enthusiasm of the volunteers yeah. and the real genuine excitement about bringing the space back. People can see the results of their hard work. And, you know, even if it's just raking, we had some very fun days there where we were just pulling leaves out of the space and um, bringing trash off site and making it look nice. But um, the before and after pictures are so wonderful they because are, they're very they dramatic. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. So you pulled together a group. Um, That's you, right. you, you incorporated a group and you have a board that is very involved in, in that effort. Yes, we, ha we are actually an official 501c3 now. We are the friends of Hearn Park, thank you. We're very excited. And uh, some of the members, I will mention the members, our officers and our board members, because they all contribute critically to this effort. Uh, I feel like I do the least amount of work, even though I'm the president, the president of the organization. Yeah. I yeah. feel like everybody else is really making it happen. So uh, Anthony Mullen is our vice president, and he chairs uh, the volunteer membership subcommittee. And one of the things he does, um, in addition to his real day job, he is the president of Longwood Players. So he's a theater person. Yeah, he has yeah, a strong a interest in theater. theater That's connection. right. Yeah. The theater con connection. Um, and then we have Galen Mook, who is our treasurer. And uh, he chairs communications and outreach subcommittees. He's also very active on the biking. Very active as you were in the world. bike world. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and that's really been valuable as well. And of course, I mentioned earlier Herb Nolan, who is the clerk of our organization and you know brought a lot of the vision about what the site could be. He's a landscape architect by training. He is. Yeah, and he, yeah. He's at the Solomon Foundation. He's the director there. Uh, so that's his day job. Uh, and Tim McHale, who is just a, a phenomenal um, jack of all trades. He's, yeah. he's overseeing the construction, the heavy work and the, uh, the design of the electrical systems and what needs to be done with the, uh, the stage to fix and repair it. and. Um, he is also a musician. He, he um, heads up the Boston Minstrels. Yeah. Yes, he does. He's a wonderful one. Very musically talented and um, charitable. dynamic and yeah. charitable. Wonderful guy. And of course, um, so Joy Lamberton Arcolano. And uh, she is our programming chair, and she has been a ball of energy. Uh, she is an instructor at the Boston Conservatory. Um, and she's helping us find the acts and performers and uh, develop interest among the uh, performing world, really, and using the space in a vibrant way. So she's been a critical link. There are a number of other people that I should thank as well. They're not on our board. Oh, right. But if I can run through a few people. Sure, just I think it's them. wonderful to know. It's, it's such a team effort. It is a team effort. It wouldn't, you know, all of us are volunteers for this effort. We all have other jobs. We are all have a lot of time constraints and pressure, and, and uh, it takes a, a large group of people putting their heart and soul into it to make it happen, and so it's really great. Um, but I did mention Sasha, uh, she's been critical in organizing our uh, volunteer days and cleanups. Um, Harry Madison, who's on your board mm -hmm. as well, has uh, participated in some of our board meetings. Representative Mike Moran, he's been terrific. He's helping That's us. That's his district, yes. Yes, and he's helping us secure some funding and have a broader dialogue about how to use the, the broader space. And he's just been a, an advocate for us in opening some doors and assisting with DCR. And, um, and at DCR, uh, Nick Connors has been our primary contact mm -hmm. there, and he's been really helpful. Um, one of the things I haven't mentioned is sort of some of the funding that's gone into this project, but uh, Gerald Altler at the BPDA. Um, has Boston, Boston Planning and, and Development Agency, yes. the former BRA, yes. Former BRA, yes. Uh, he's been our, our contact with uh, the funding that came from the Harvard um, Flex Fund, yeah, um, yeah. 
which is a critical piece. Uh, the Harvard Alston Public Realm Flex Fund uh, gave us fifty thousand dollars after we wrote a grant um, to basically repair all the electrical systems. It and, per wrote a perfect fit. They uh, repaired the infrastructure and, and made that theater illuminated. That's again. right. And, and, and this, none of this would have happened without my two staff. So I do have to mention them because Karen Shea did a lot of the work on the grant mm -hmm. application and she put up the website and does a lot of the, you know, developed a lot of the social media initially and she's she's an excellent grant writer and she's been working a lot of the logistics behind the scene and Alyssa Langa, another staff member of mine, helped with all the incorporating paperwork and all the, the research and, and sort of legal efforts that went into getting us uh, our official 501c3 Wonderful. steps. Let's have a look um, here of, of how, how the work, you know, you mentioned gathering the leaves and you can see the the little hills around it um, that can be part of the of the of the surroundings. It was a lot to gather, a lot it's of Tim debris. Tim, yeah. Is that Tim there so. gathering? Yeah. You see the repairing of the benches going on in this scene. Yeah. Yeah. That we needed. Need I remember that to order the, the boards and cut them and and install them. Yeah. Here they get paint. Them. They're painting them. Yeah. People, volunteers love to paint. And the stage. Oh. So this stage, it, it was has, is now repaired. Tell us what's going to happen on this stage. Oh, we are so excited because you know, the, when we started this effort, we spent a really good amount of time developing a mission. And I will just say that the the mission is to enhance community spaces within Her Herder Park and promote them as cultural and recreational resources for the well-being of all. Mm -hmm. By that we meant we wanted the space to be open to the public and for programming to be mostly, if not always, free to the community. Um, you know, there, perhaps someday someone will want to do a ticketed event, but our goal is really to have public programming free and open for all. Um, and so we are having a, uh, uh, we did one, um, open house to meet potential uh, volunteers and performers and that happened in May but we also have a big kickoff event July 15th and that will be on a Saturday from about All 3 right. to 8. Tell us about that event. Um, well the expert on that event is, is Joy and, and uh, some of the other board members but we are putting together a whole slate of programs with, with uh, sets about 20 to 25 minutes long and there will be musicians and comedians we might have some poetry. We're still developing the um, content of mm -hmm. that event, but it is going, you know, we hope to have some food trucks and it'll just be an open afternoon with uh, local performers, trying to get as many local performers as possible into the space and open it up to the community. Yeah. So that's the, the first event. And of course, it's a, it's a perfect place to go to bike. It's the it perfect is. place. Um, you know, you can walk there, you can combine it with a canoe and kayak trip. That's so right. it's it's very accessible by by bike. There is a parking lot nearby. Yes, people need to drive, but and it's very accessible. It is accessible. We're also sort of working, or we're at least in our larger vision, hoping to work with the city and the state to improve the walk uh, walkability. There are still some pedestrian connection issues that need to be sort of improved at the traffic light there, yeah. where where the traffic light jug handle access is Everett Street. There's you know there, we need curb cuts for um, handicap ramps, you know, we want the site to be Yeah, and Soldier's Hill Road is, is a is a hard to overcome obstacle. There is a pedestrian bridge, but there's a light, but it's it's not an obvious connector. That's right. That's so right. So we, we hope that we'll see that improved down the road. I know there's been some studies that have been uh, put in the works by VHB to look at the intersection. That's an engineering so, firm. Yes, yeah. an engineering firm. So we, we have hope that long term we can improve both the accessibility for all users mm -hmm. in all modes. Yeah, and both your past professional life and your current one is as in community development. So this this is your field. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah, you were in a uh, community development head in, in, Hudson. A, in, in Hudson mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and continue to do that kind of work. As a consultant now. Yes, I do. I work for a number of municipalities. I do a, a fair amount of complete streets work. I was involved in helping develop the legislation um, that we now have that uh, has provided is providing funding to cities and towns to improve um, connectivity and um, bikeability and walkability and uh, throughout 
all of our communities. Yeah, so. so you're working complete. So now you're working on a complete park because well, really a park a park is not complete uh, right. until you uh, you have activities there. So we want to just go through um, the some of the groups that have worked on here. We have you know, there's a lot of excitement. You see Herb, is his hands up there in the middle. You see Tim on the left. Yeah. 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 A lot of see Karen on the right. Yeah, yeah. And a lot. I think of, that's Anthony down in front. Yeah, yeah. and they Sasha in the front, and here, you know, it's it's Wonder just Woman. the full stage. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, tell us a little bit then about what's happening in August. Then, yes. All your plans for August. Yes, we do. Um, we have Brown Box Theater coming to present Hamlet, which is incredibly mm. exciting. Um, we heard that they needed a place to uh, rehearse and wanted to um, debut their show here um, in Harder Park. So they will be rehearsing for a number of days and then the actual performances will be August 11th through 13th. Wow. So I think there's an open preview the night prior. I'm, I'm still a little unclear whether or not the full public can come to that open, but yeah. 11th, 12th and 13th, I think the public should look for, go see our website there'll be details up on it when we have the specifics of the time, but right now we think it's going to be 7.30 at night yeah. um, and a full full performance. And and this um, the public theatre has a long tradition of Shakespeare plays. I think I've seen yes. probably, yes. I don't know, but five or six and they used to be musicals. That's right. So there might be a lot of people in the neighbourhood who have fond memories of going there Indeed. on a summer night and listen to performances. That's right. But I would say that you know we want to focus on a much broader range of types of performances because it is very difficult to do theater outdoors when you have weather to consider. And it's very hard to have sets outside on a, on a, on a stage. So when we imagine and envision that we would want performances that would appeal to all types of people, all ages. So movie nights, uh, puppet shows for children, comedy, uh, open microphone evenings. Um, this space has been suggested to be a great place to kick off a walkathon or a bikeathon because you have a wonderful loop you can do, a 5K mm -hmm. loop on both sides of the river, and you could end up back at the amphitheater to give out your awards or to, or to start or end both in the space where you can gather people. I think there's about 300 seats. So it's a yeah. really nice, and it's that's a nice scale. it's a nice scale. But then you also have the hills if you need more. You, you could expand more. easily. That's right. So people yeah. could sit on blankets if you had a larger event. Um, but we we really want to take our cues from the neighborhood and from the community, and that's why we're going to continue to hold open houses to hear from residents and and people who are in the area about what types of performances they would want to yeah. see. Yeah, and tell us what we have only a moment left. Tell us what your needs are in terms of, of the of the Herda Park Theatre? Yes, well, of course, it's always fundraising. And I should just mention um, a couple of our donors, because that is important. We have uh, the Solomon Foundation has given us a considerable amount of money. I think it was uh, $15,000. And the Greater Greener Boston, 10000 Sokolo Family Foundation, um, I think that's about 20000 at this point, and the Harvard Flex yeah. one. But going forward, you know, in order to do active programming, if we want the programming to be free to the community, we will need funders to help us uh, support the programming. Um, DCR does have uh, some permitting and licensing fees and they need to have staff on site during our events. Mm -hmm. We'll need to have porta potties and all kinds and security in some cases and all yeah. kinds of things and renting generators until the electrical system's up and running. So it's really um, it's going to be about the fundraising going forward for quite a bit. So we are developing a model that we think will work to have different levels of participation and we hope to have corporate sponsors and, and um, Great. A lot of support in that yeah. fashion. Well, it, you, I know you've already built up a lot of, of excitement, and the moment people can come to events, that will help. That That's will, right. That will make a huge, a huge difference. And you have, um, uh, this is your website. Yeah. So people can go to your website to find out more about um, the friends and the board members and the activities. So. Um, that you can look that up. So um, we're coming to the end. So I want to thank you for doing that work, bringing a park back alive. Um, we know in a time when DCR gets less and less funding, 
it's, right. it's a huge challenge, mm -hmm. but I see from all the excitement that the volunteers bring back and new board members. So I think it, I will be there on July 15th. Yes, come and join us. Yeah, everyone. and if you just joined us and you missed the beginning, um, this show will be on YouTube that you can find under YouTube, Herder Park and Charles River Conservancy. Okay together with over a hundred other shows about <laughs> swimming and biking yeah. and, and volunteering. Um, so it's, it's a great way to let other people know what's happening along the Charles River. Uh, we are so lucky to have this publicly owned um, river and publicly owned parklands. And in a funny way, you know, I've heard the park was very close to the abattoir, the slaughterhouses. And in a, because it was so smelly along the river, that's probably one of the reasons that it didn't get developed that's right. close by, because people didn't want to live that close. Mm -hmm. So, Michelle, thank you for coming today. Mm -hmm. And um, we will put up an image so you can find the contact information about the Charles River Conservancy. Terrific. Thank you for having me.